What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I know all of you are going to love this one today because we're talking about growing tomatoes and specifically how to hand pollinate them using five different methods. So this topic comes up quite a bit when we're growing tomatoes, especially when we're growing them indoors and we don't have the help of pollinators like bees, moths, uh, flies, ants. Yes, even ants can pollinate your flowers. But without having those available to us, how are we going to get fruit set? And so I thought I'd come down here today to talk about the five different methods you can use to hand pollinate your tomatoes and, uh, and have some pretty good success with. Um, now, why would you want to hand pollinate? Well, hand pollination is a way of increasing the fruit set rate. Um, tomatoes are actually what we call self-fruitful. This means they have both male and female components contained within the same flower. It's not like a zucchini or a squash or a pumpkin um, that, that needs male and female flowers. Uh, you have both the male and female components contained within the same flower. And this is great for a couple reasons. One is that it makes it very difficult for crosses to occur. Um, yes, they do happen in nature and they do happen on a regular basis if you have a, a very active pollinator pollinating several plants within close proximity. But generally, it's not as common as, uh, as you'd think um, because of the fact that the both uh, male and female components are contained within the same flower, generally cross pollinations don't happen that often and, uh, and therefore it's pretty stable, which is great. But when it comes to fertility, it's also great because the plant, uh, because of the fact that the male and female components are in the same flower, you really don't have to do a whole lot and you'll still get some fruit. Now you won't get a lot of fruit, but if I were just to leave these plants be, go on vacation, never touch them, never have any pollinators come, they still would set about 20 to 30% of their fruit. And that's awesome. And the reason why is because uh, the flowers are actually positioned facing downward. And what that allows, uh, what, you know, what, what that allows the flower to do is to self-pollinate. Gravity over time, gravity and micro vibrations will actually send pollen from the anthers uh, and land on the stigma. And the anthers being the, the male portion and the stigma being the female portion. And over time, that will just occur naturally. Um, and again, it doesn't happen with great success, but still 20 to 30% fruit set is pretty awesome given that you don't even have to touch them. But how can we increase that? Well, by vibrating the flowers. You see, when a pollinator comes and actually pollinates the flowers, the vibrations are what causes the pollen to fall from the anthers onto the stigma. And since the flower is positioned upside down, this happens far more frequently with tomatoes rather than a flower that say is upright, like a pumpkin, uh, that does not require any vibration because there's a male flower that requires a bee to dance around those anthers and then fly over to a female flower and pollinate uh, and land on the stigma of the flower. So that is something that you, that, that just happens naturally because it's required. But with a tomato, uh, it's much more involuntary. Um, the vibrations of the wings are what knocks the pollen free and helps it flow down to the stigma of the flower. The bee really has no intention of pollinating a flower and going from flower to flower other than getting a little bit of pollen. And that's why typically tomatoes are some of your least pollinated crops because there's not a whole lot of pollen to give. And that's why things like bumblebees might resort to them. You might, you might see an occasional honeybee, but very rarely because they don't give a whole lot of pollen and they also don't have any nectar. And therefore they're not very desirable for pollinators. Um, so yeah, you do need some, a little bit of assistance to increase that pollination rate. And if you want to increase the fruit set, there's a few things that we have at our disposal that are really going to do that. So if we jump right on into it, have some fun with this one and hopefully get all of you out there into the garden. If not right now, this applies to indoor and outdoor growing. It doesn't matter. This will help you to have a whole lot more success. The first method is with a paintbrush. This is a very easy way to hand pollinate your flowers because the paintbrush basically simulates the proboscis of a pollinator like a moth or a butterfly. 
the proboscis is just a thin straw-like, basically tongue, that helps to gather nectar. And so you can take this, and because it's very agile, you can take it and pollinate the flower by getting up in between the uh, the flower there, the little little sepals, and pollinating that. Um, the anthers are also in there as well. So we're just hand pollinating that. And that's helping to knock free some of that pollen. And then you also have the pollen on this paintbrush. Now be very careful because if you were to take this to another flower of a different variety, a cross pollination would be very probable. So just keep this, uh, make sure this is washed or uh, washed in some isopropyl alcohol and then dried before moving from variety to variety if you do not want cross pollination because it would be, like I said, pretty probable. The next option is with a Q-tip. Q-tips are awesome at pollinating because they're very fuzzy, they have a lot of surface area, and they pick up so much pollen on those fuzzes. Now, this is definitely something that you have to be a little bit more uh, forceful with. Really gather those, that pollen and then give it, a good, give it a good tap up against the flower and then move on to another one. Now, obviously, since we only have one, one bloom right now, this won't do you a whole lot of good uh, because you know, you're transferring, essentially transferring pollen and making sure that that pollen count on the female portion is high enough to set fruit. You see, one, it's, not like, uh, it's not like humans where it only takes one sperm and one egg. You need multiple bits of pollen to land on the stigma in order to set fruit. So the pollen count has to be high enough in order to actually set that fruit and make it viable. Um, so this will really help to increase that pollen count by transferring them flower to flower. Now the next one is actually our finger. This is a one we've done a video on before called increasing your tomato, uh, increasing the amount of tomatoes you get by 75% by simply using your finger. And so you can tickle your plants like that. Just give them a good, give them a good tapping. Pretend you're a bee buzzing up against them and you're going to just kind of give them a good tap. It helps to knock down that pollen onto the stigma and you will notice that you'll have significantly more fruit set by simply doing even this method. Keeping the vibrations fast and not abrupt also helps because the faster and more frequent the vibrations, the more pollen is going to drop down rather than just really abrupt. You could risk knocking the, the flower off entirely and breaking it. So keep it really gentle, but very, very uh, high frequency and you'll be, you'll be far better off. Now the next method is one that I don't personally have here with me because I don't personally use one and that's an electric toothbrush. This is fantastic for pollinating your vegetables because of the fact that it vibrates at such a high frequency like I was just stating with your finger that it, is, it does actually a far better job at vibrating the pollen from the, stig, uh, from the anthers onto the stigma. And this is something that we you know, actually have seen uh, come onto the forefront of hand pollination when it comes to like greenhouse growing and things like that, they'll actually create these little vibrating wands that they stick on. It's got two little fingers that sticks on to the flower and just sits on there really quick, vibrates, and they're good. And they move from flower to flower to increase the fruit set that they have. And this was all adapted from the electric toothbrush. And so definitely by no means is it silly to go walking out in the garden with an electric toothbrush and vibrating the flowers of your tomato plants. It will really help and it definitely actually does work. Um, I've just simply moved away from an electric toothbrush because they're very expensive. So uh, all manual for me, but yeah, they do work. Now the final method of hand pollination doesn't even require your hands at all. All you need to do is have a radio, but if you're very good at playing an instrument, I'm not, you can also play that. As we talked about in the very beginning, the micro vibrations are what knocks the pollen from the anthers onto the stigma. And those micro vibrations are found in music. So if you play loud music in your garden, not only do those micro vibrations help the plants grow, but when flowering, it can also help to knock the pollen loose 
and help pollinate your tomatoes. And so it's another reason to get outside, be outside in your garden with not only your instruments or your radio, but just get out there and have fun. And these five ways are definitely going to increase your fruit yields, help you to have more success in the garden, and I hope it works. I hope you try some of them and let me know if you do try them in the comments box below. Also, make sure to share this video if you found it informative and fun. It definitely helps spread this video around to other people who could, uh, who could use this information. And if you have not yet subscribed, make sure to do that. That's a very good idea because especially we're gonna be starting seeds real soon in the garden. And it's something that, uh, that you know, never, never fails to be a ton of fun. So we're going to have a lot of fun this year. Very excited about it. I can't wait to bring you all along on this journey. So I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the On My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya.